Okay, we'll let uh, Coach Nostin get settled. All right, we've got uh, Austin Burton, the quarterback, and then interim quarterback, Coach Drew Brees, joining us on stage. If you have a question, you can raise your hand. We'll bring a mic to you. Uh, who's first? On the right over here. Yeah, Drew, just real quick, a couple things. Um, have you had any input as far as maybe implementing any, any play ideas that, that you may have uh, brought to West Lafayette with you? And then on game day, kind of explain your role, what that would mean, where you'd be located. Yeah. Um, you know, obviously there was, a, there was a great system in place uh, with the Purdue offense, and um, that, that is still continuing to be executed, I think. Um, I've had great collaboration with, with Brian Brom, who's our interim head coach and, and also the guy who's going to be calling the plays. Um, and, you know, for me, a lot of the last two weeks have been uh, getting up to speed with the things that, um, you know, I'd say that kind of the core principles of this offense, um, the things that our quarterback, you know, likes to do and is very good at. Uh, and then, you know, finding places where I can, uh, you know, offer up ideas. Uh, or maybe um, little nuances to and, and additions, or or just thoughts that might be implemented as well. And so I think the combination of those things um, is uh, is what you know we might see on Monday. We'll go to the back and then Matt down front. Uh, Drew, you know how Louisiana is. LSU on Saturday, Saints on Sunday. Uh, all the fans have been rooting for both teams and you over the years. So. What have you heard? What's been kind of entertaining about, hey, Drew Brees is trying to beat LSU in this game? <laughs> yeah, I was, uh, it's funny because obviously being a, being a Saints fan is like being a Tiger fan, right? It's, uh, they're one and the same. Um, and, uh, you know, growing up in Louisiana uh, or, or having, you know, 15 years in Louisiana and, and raising our, having our kids born there, having our kids raised there, um, you know, obviously we were, we were Tiger fans as well, you know, still are. Uh, I love LSU. Um, except for Monday, um, but uh, you know the, the the way this all came together is 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 really you know kind of funny. I you know my family and I you know fly to Indianapolis to go uh, watch the Big Ten championship game. You know watch Purdue take on Michigan, um, and uh, you know right on the heels of that, obviously you know our our head coach leaves, uh, and you know we're all kind of trying to figure out what the bowl scenario is going to look like with the coaching staff and. Um, that's when uh, my conversations with Purdue began about, uh, you know, just offering my assistance to be able to come in and help um, as a, a coach in any capacity. At the end of the day, I love my university. I love my alma mater. And I wanted to provide whatever assistance they might need during this time, not only to get ready for the bowl game, but also to help, you know, stabilize the program and help with any transition to the next head coach. Um, and um, in the process, it would give me a, a great opportunity to work with great young men like Austin Burton here and others. Um, and look, I love the game of football too, you know, so, so have the opportunity to, um, you know, take a lot of the things that I've learned throughout my career and maybe impart some of that knowledge, experience, wisdom on these young men was a great opportunity. And it just happened to be that it was against the LSU Tigers in the Citrus Bowl, <laughs> right? Um, but like I said, I've got so much respect for LSU I know so many of the guys on the coaching staff, um, whether they were coaches with the Saints at some point, so we had that relationship. Um, uh, shoot, you know, Dr. Tate, the president, <laughs> uh, uh, Scott Woodward, the, the you know, athletic director. I mean, all these guys I've had great relationships with, con conversations with here throughout this off season. Um, I mean, shoot, I had, a, I had a shoulder surgery in Baton Rouge <laughs> in May and did some rehab there at the LSU facility. So. Uh, um, uh, with Bo Lowry. So, I mean, look, it, at the end of the day, I've got a great relationship with these guys, but uh, um, I'll equate it to, you know, when you go out in the in the yard, you know, uh, on Thanksgiving Day or Christmas Day to, to play a backyard football game with your family. You love them, but you're trying to beat them. We'll go down front and then to the back. Yeah, this question is for Austin. When, when you guys heard that Drew was going to join the staff and, and help you guys out, what kind of went through your mind and and what did you know about Drew? I mean, did you have to do a little any research or anything about that? <laughs> uh, I don't think it took much research to know who Drew Brees was. But uh, I think as a room, excited would be an understatement. You know what I mean? Just to have a Hall of Famer come in your room and 
be able to just learn so much. And the best part about it is just so open to any question, you know, any little thing, whether it's watching film or on the practice field, he's just very detailed and very like specific and gets you the right answer all the time. So it's just been awesome to have that resource around and it's been a really exciting time. Go back to them front. Uh, Jacob Verdon from the Verdon Verdict. What have you seen from Brian Kelly and his coaching staff over at LSU that's led to the quick success? Yeah, um, I've, I've been really impressed. You know, I, maybe I have a little more insight because I was broadcasting games for NBC last year and, and we had all the home games for Notre Dame, right? So obviously Brian Kelly was a head coach there and so I had a chance to sit on, on a lot of production meetings with him and, um, you know, hear his philosophy um, and his strategy and watch the way that he implemented that with his team there. Um, right when he, it was announced that he was taking the LSU job, I felt like that was gonna be a great fit. Um, I think he, he brings, uh, I think a great level of experience, uh, structure, um, and I think certainly to continue the, the winning ways at, at LSU, but also when you look at just the, 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 the uh, crop of talent that, that exists in Louisiana and, and their ability to recruit, um, I just felt like that would be uh, something that would attract people even more to, to LSU and, and obviously create, continue to build on a program that, that already is very, very successful and is a contender each and every year for a national championship, but that that would continue. And I think that culminated into that win against Alabama. Um, me and my boys were sitting in the living room <laughs> rooting them on, you know, every step of the way. And, and so obviously that was a defining win, I think, for LSU and the program and I think really sets the stage for a lot of what they're going to be able to accomplish in the future. I think there's a great level of confidence there around, you know, Brian Kelly and, and the program that he's going to build. A little bit on front. We'll take a couple on the right. Um, for Austin Andrew, how much can you kind of make up uh, across the past month when you have a bunch of opt-outs and you're playing with – a lot of new guys and you're getting back in there, um, you know, as opposed to maybe the start you had earlier in the year when uh, you kind of had a very short amount of time to get ready for it. You know, when you have a month, you know, how much you're able to kind of knock out to get more comfortable? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I think, um, like you said, just the, the one of the blessings about it is just having that full month to really prepare and kind of know you're the guy versus, you know, that little week when I was still unsure if I was starting until later on in the week, kind of just knowing the situation. And then in terms of, uh, opt-outs, I think it just gives guys a great opportunity to step up. I think a lot of the guys from wide receiver to tight end to who else, you know, defensive players too, it's just such an opportunity for all of us to really kind of make our statement that, you know, we feel like we want to show that we can play on the on the big time stage too. So it's just a great opportunity for all of us. And I think there's a lot of excitement and eagerness to just go out there and, and play well. Oh, the third row, second row, first row. You got me. Thank you. Sure. Back to playing football in the backyard. <laughs> on a Always. Day like today. <laughs> I throw left-handed now, though. <laughs> uh, I, I know you said at the start of this is just a, a one-time thing, but yeah, I assume that's still the case for you. Yes. Uh, um, but yes. have you had teams or programs reach out to you and try to gauge your interest if, if you'd like to continue coaching? Yes, but but that, that I'm not entertaining those. This is interim. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm just doing this because I love my university and the opportunity to, to coach young men like Austin and our team and uh, just get this program through the bowl game. Obviously get us prepared to go out there and play really well against LSU on Monday. Um, and then after that, um, you know, turn back into a pumpkin. <laughs> the second row. <laughs> Um, Austin, what would it mean for you personally to be able to finish your college career as a starting quarterback here at Purdue? Yeah, it's been a long, it's been a long career, but uh, just you know, over the past couple of years, we've just as a team in general have done some really great things for this university, and um, you know, set in history this past year and the year before that, having an eight, another eight win season or nine win season, I should say. It's just been an awesome, uh, awesome time here, and to go out on top and win the Citrus Bowl would be a uh, a good way to go out. Other than that, no, Wilson. Drew, you've been around college football obviously f a lot. Um, you've seen what's gone on with the transfer portal and opt outs. What's kind of been your thoughts on that as, as you see kind of the, the sport change a little bit? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, uh, <clears throat> you've basically brought free agency to college football. <laughs> um, and I think there are some examples of it where. Um, it's been a really positive thing, you know, for guys to, to maybe go somewhere else and get an opportunity. Um, unfortunately, I think there's more examples where it's probably not the best thing. Um, 
I think it, uh, in, in some cases, it allows guys to bypass um, the growth and development that takes place in your early years um, as a freshman, as a sophomore, even as a junior, um, of having to fight through some adversity, um, really grow, really develop, um, you know, kind of battle through tough times in order to get to where you want to get. I think there's a lot of character development that goes along with that. Um, in some cases, I think the portal provides an easy out um, and allows guys to avoid having to go through that. Um, but I think uh, all of us would recognize the benefits of having to, to struggle a little bit, you know, and having to maybe get not get what you want <clears throat> for a while um, and having to learn the hard way. I know how much that benefited me. Um, and I think there was probably a lot of guys that would have said, hey, had the portal been there when, when they were there? They might have, they might have, you know, they might have entered it, you know, and gone elsewhere and not kind of foregone, you know, the opportunities that they ended up having, you know, um, when they stayed. So um, I think it, it feels like there's still some elements of that that are up for discussion and that might be modified as we go along here. Um, but it is the world we live in, and we're not in a position to make those rules right now. So we just. <coughs> We just, you know, we just follow them. We have time for a couple more. We'll do one here, one in the back. Austin, for you, there's a lot of people, you know, see the opt-outs they have had on your team, and they think, well, I play this game at all. For you, you're a six-year senior. This is your last college game. You get to start. What is that like for you to end your career this way? Yeah, I can't, I can't really ask for much more than that. To have an opportunity to play in the Citrus Bowl and have Coach Breeze, you know, be a part of it as well, it's, it's really such a unique situation. And... Like I said earlier, for all the opt-outs, I mean, guys are wide receiver room, tight room. They're all very excited just to be able to get on there and make some plays. So it's just such a unique situation, trying to maximize every moment of it. Nathan, back. Uh, back here, Nathan Rebus, New Six here in Orlando. Uh, Austin, question for you first. You know, LSU, Purdue, both made it to their respective championship games. They're meeting here in this bowl game. Just how exciting is it in this big caliber matchup? Yeah, it's huge. I mean, LSU had a great season. Like you said, made the SEC championship game, you know, won a lot of games for them. So it's exciting for us, too. We had a, another great season. So it's just uh, – it should be a good game on uh, in two days from now. So we're juiced up for it. And then, Coach Breeze, for you, I know you've only been here for a little bit, but you've been in, you've been in big games. You've seen this team throughout the season. How big of a win would this be for Purdue? Uh, this, would, this would be a big win uh, against – uh, a program that is no doubt a top five, top three uh, college football program in the country. Um, LSU fights for national championships each and every year. That's their the level of expectation. Um, and obviously, uh, you know, I think we, we acknowledge just how strong the SEC is as a conference and the battles that take place week in and week out in that conference. So, you know, you come out of that conference um, – in the upper echelon, you know that you are a really good football team. And um, I think Purdue, That's these are the games that we strive to have the opportunity to play in. Uh, so it's an honor to be here. It's an honor to play against an opponent like LSU. Um, and hopefully hopefully everybody has a chance to see our brand of football and, and enjoy what Purdue can do. Obviously, we take a lot of pride um, with the, the grit and determination that we play with um, and the opportunity that a lot of these guys are going to have on Monday uh, to play in this game, to play against LSU, and, and hopefully put on a great performance. Thank you, guys. Appreciate your time. All right. Thank you. We'll have one more round, starting in a couple minutes. And uh, appreciate your time. Have a great this morning.